so it's finally here. I finally have the tutorial done on the quilt that I made for Tracy for the sewing channel and for her anniversary. It took me a little bit, but I got it done. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go check out Tracy's channel. It's called The Sewing Channel, and she has a giveaway going on right now for five quilts, five of them, and one of them is mine, and it's this log cabin quilt. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the project that I donated to The Sewing Channel, and make sure you check out her channel too. I also wanna give a big thank you to her because this was a huge opportunity for me and I had a lot of fun doing it. But before we get started on the tutorial, my name is Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you for joining me. So this tutorial is going to be a little long and detailed and I'm gonna put timestamps in the description below so you can just go to the section that you want to see. So for example, if you already know how to starch fabric or you already know how to cut these pieces, you can just skip ahead to maybe something you don't know or want to see. I also will have all of the measurements and everything on my blog and I'll put a link to that below as well. So we are making this beautiful log cabin quilt and you'll need at least one jelly roll. Now uh, I actually went into this a second jelly roll with this quilt because I made it a little bigger than I first intended to. So you can use your own judgment on that. You might want to use more than one but either way I'm going to show you how to make the block and I'm going to show you how you can chain piece these blocks and get it done fairly quickly. The first thing though I do want to mention is a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm making a second quilt because I really loved it and I want one for myself. So this tutorial isn't being filmed of the original quilt that I made but a second quilt that I'm making to demonstrate this process. So let's get started. So before we get started opening up one of these jelly rolls, which I just love doing that, uh, this fabric is called Prairie Dreams and it's by Kansas Trouble Quilters. I love this jelly roll. I've made a few things out of it. It is great. It's probably one of the most underrated jelly rolls that are out there right now. Every fabric is different. You don't always get that with jelly rolls because sometimes jelly rolls have duplicate fabrics. And what's really nice for this project is it makes it look scrappy when it's really not and all the fabrics go together. It's also a nice fabric line that you can integrate other fabrics into. I do wanna talk about what exactly a jelly roll strip is and why we have to have some special consideration when using them. So here's one of the jelly roll strips. And uh, this is actually a scrap from the quilt that I made. And you can see it is about 40, 42, 44 inches long. So it's the width of the fabric and it's cut on the width. So if you can see that here, I'll do it this way. You can see both ends, both pieces, both salvages here. Because of the way it's cut, so it's cut across the fabric, it's cut on the cross grain, not the straight grain. So I don't know if you can see that, let me turn around. It's stretchy. Now this one's been starched and it's still stretchy. When you get them right out of the roll, they are super duper stretchy. Because of that, one of the biggest mistakes people make when making a log cabin quilt is they construct it like this. They just keep adding strips, pressing them back with their hand, cutting them off and adding another one. And this is a surefire way to get a very wonky log cabin block. And why is that a big deal? It's a big deal because it's gonna create a wonky block and it's not gonna be square. It's gonna give you a lot of frustration and you're not gonna get that really cool look that you get with a log cabin. If that's okay with you, go ahead and do it. However, I'm not, trying to be like the quilt police. You know, there's many different ways to make things. But for this video, I do wanna show you, I don't wanna say the right way to do something, but a good way that's gonna give you a successful result. Hope that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is starch the fabric, get ready to work on our blocks, and we're gonna cut our pieces and then sew them together. That's gonna to give you a more square, true block, and you're not gonna run into so many problems later on. So first we're gonna open our package and we're going to press and starch our, our strips. So to do this, all I do is, is press out that wrinkle in the middle and I just soak them with spray starch and I just use this spray starch that's just the Niagara spray starch. It's a medium starch. We don't wanna starch afterward because it will change, it'll bring in all those fibers and maybe make our block a little bit smaller. So I always do it before I put them onto this drying rack. Some people do it overnight. I'm usually too excited to get sewing. So I just let them dry for a couple hours if I'm lucky. But anyway, the right way or the best way is probably to let them dry completely. And then you'll get a nice stiff, more manageable piece of fabric to work with. 
It is a step that will help you succeed in this process. Is it necessary? Probably not, but I'd like to do it, especially with jelly roll strips. Once my strips are dry, I do hit them with the iron again. A dry iron, you do not want to use steam. The steam will make all of that work of starching them go away and it dissolve and saturate that starch. And we don't want that. We want these to be nice and stiff. Okay, so I have all the strips here. I starched them, as you saw, and I let them dry, and then I pressed them again just to get all the wrinkles out and everything. So uh, for this particular jelly roll, there are 40 strips, and they aren't consistent with color like on how many there are. For example, this dark navy blue right here, which looks a lot like the black. There's only two of the dark ones, and then we have a lighter blue up here, but it's not super consistent because there are only two of these there are two of these, but there are six of these. So you have to be careful with what you're cutting out and when you're cutting them out. Now, I already know I'm going to take this yellow mustard out. This is what I used for the binding on the quilt that I made for Tracy, and it really worked nice because it does go with this, uh, but I wanted this medium color out of the mix. You could leave this in. It would be really pretty in there. It would give it a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of an unexpected element to the quilt, but I took them out. So now that that's gone, I wanna show you, I'm gonna separate these into darks and lights. And I'm gonna put this over here. You can see I clipped the colors together so I can keep them straight and keep them nice. So I'll put that here. These are my lights. And like I said in the introduction, I had to add in some more lights because I think there's only 11 lights here. But these are a nice neutral palette and I had some in my stash. You could also buy some yardage. I noticed that even though they're all different, when they're put together in the block, you can have duplicates in the same block and nobody would notice it blends right in. So that's not a big deal. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make up my test block. I always try to do that because it saves me in the long run. A test block will give me an idea of how this is put together and it'll allow me to kind of work out any kinks that I have with the block. And it also gives me a roadmap of the layout. So I keep that test block right beside my sewing space. And that way I can always refer to it when I am not quite sure where a piece of fabric, whether light or dark and where it goes. And this can get tricky with a log cabin block. So we're gonna cut for our test block. This is probably a great time for me to give you the measurements of everything that we are going to cut. From our darks to make one block, one 14 and a half inch block, we're going to cut one of each of these. And I'll put that up on the screen and I'll also have it in the description and on my blog. So it's one two and a half inch, one four and a half inch, one six and a half inch, one eight and a half inch, one ten and a half inch, one twelve and a half inch, and one fourteen and a half inch. And of course it's two and a half is the width because we're using the jelly roll strips. Now for the light, very similar, except for you're not going to be cutting a 14 and a half inch strip. So it's gonna be two and a half, four and a half, six and a half, eight and a half, 10 and a half, and 12 and a half, okay? So I'm gonna just pull a couple of these for my test block. I'm gonna show you how I cut them and I have some tricks for that. Okay, so I pulled six lights and seven darks because that's what we need for this pattern. So I'm going to show you how I cut them and I'm gonna pick one. It looks really good on camera. Let's do this maroon to demo this. I'm gonna get these out of the way. All right, so one thing I kind of want you to think about is getting rid of the idea that we have to use a mat to measure. What we're gonna do for this project is we're going to use just a ruler and I'll show you exactly what I mean. This particular ruler is by OmniGrid. It's a three inch wide and it is a 18 inch long. So that's gonna accommodate even our longest strip. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. If you're gonna use a different size ruler, just make sure it's bigger than two and a half inches. And I'll show you why. The first thing I'm gonna do is line this up and I'm going to cut off these salvages. So I just lined up the salvages and I'm gonna trim them off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up a line on my ruler. Actually, I'm gonna move it up here on either side to make sure that this is a straight cut. I'm also gonna make sure that I get all of my salvage when I cut it. So I'm just lining up a line here 
in a line here. That's going to make sure it's straight. And again, I'm not using the mat for this. If it's, if it's helpful, you can even turn your mat over so you do not have any lines to distract you. And that also helps. So I'm just gonna cut these off. I know they're nice and straight. Okay. Now my first cut, I'll open this back up so I had that folded. I did not crease this end because we don't wanna put a crease in there, right? I'm just gonna open this up. And my first cut is two and a half inches. So I'm going to line that up so my lines are straight on the block and this line is also straight. And I'm gonna hold my ruler and cut. And that's the first piece I need, which is two and a half inch square. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna cut my next fabric. And I know this seems like a lot of, I don't know, extra work, not cutting these all at once, but trust me, if you make a mistake, you're only you know, wasting or only using up a little bit of fabric. And you know, that's kind of nice. I've made the mistake before where I've cut everything out and I cut something wrong and then I have to go either buy more fabric or I, you know, sometimes don't even complete the project because of it. I'm gonna keep doing that. And I'm going to do the exact same way, except for this next piece that I'm cutting is a four and a half inch square, four and a half inch rectangle rather. So I'm going to line this up just like I did before. Nice and straight, making sure everything is straight and cutting it. And I'm gonna go through and do all of our cuts. Okay, now that I have them, all cut, you can see, and I just put them together like this and I'll clip them to take them over to the sewing machine. I have to still do the lights, which I'll do now, and I will meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, so I have my sets of, of my darks and my lights, everything I need for my test block. So I'm gonna take the two center squares and I'm gonna put them together and sew a quarter inch seam. I have a neutral thread in my machine and it's like a beige, which I think works well for this, for the um, like earth tone colors. And I'm just gonna line up these squares. And sew my seam. And there is your quarter inch seam. Next, I am going to set that seam. I'm gonna turn the thread too. Turn that thread off and I'm going to set my seam, meaning I'm going to press it right just like it is. And actually, I'll bring my mat over and show you what I mean. So I have it right here. And I'm just gonna press it like that. And it's gonna set that seam and just make all those threads relax. Next, I'm going to press to the dark side on this. And by the way, with this block, you always press out. I'll finger press it first and then hit it with my iron. Okay, so next I'm going to add the next piece and it's going to be a light, okay? so. Once you have your test block done, it's a lot easier, but the way you're gonna work is counterclockwise all the way around. So I know if I keep this dark color up towards the wall or the back of my machine, that I'll be okay if I keep going around. Again, the test block helps. This should fit perfectly because we pre-cut them. We didn't just uh, willy-nilly put pieces together. You can do that, like I said, but this makes it a little easier. So I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam and do the same thing. I'm gonna press this, then open it and press it again, and I'm gonna work all the way around. Now, when we get all of our pieces cut after we have our test block done, we will be able to do this in a chain piecing way. So you'd be putting all of your third pieces on together, cutting them apart, then putting on your fourth and so forth. But because this is a test block, we are doing it one at a time. I'm off camera pressing. 
I'm pressing my seam away or out. I'll show you what I mean right here. So it's going this way. It's going towards the piece I just sewed on. You can see it here. All right, I'm gonna keep that dark piece, that middle piece facing towards the back of my machine. I know I'm working counterclockwise. My next fabric is dark. Okay, and it should match and it does, yay. I'm gonna put that on. So a quarter inch. Set my seam and press. Next, again, keeping this going the same direction. I know I need to put one here. It's gonna be dark. So I'm gonna do light, light, dark, dark, light, light, dark, dark. And that's how we're gonna build this. So I'm gonna speed up this part and show you what I mean. Okay, we're down to our last piece. It's going to go right here. I think it's the right length, which is really good because that means I cut everything right and got everything the right length and all that. And it will make a nice square log cabin block, which is good too. So I'm gonna sew this on. it and there you have it there's your test block it turned out beautifully so let me show you one that I have it's a little wrinkled but I'll show it to you anyway uh, here's one that I made um, this is the one I actually made when I made the quilt for Tracy it needs to be pressed but it does lay flat I swear I put arrows and numbers on it just so I can see how I'm making this block so it really is helpful especially for this block and now that we have a test block we know it works we can go and make the rest of these. And to do that, we are going to chain piece. But first I'm gonna show you how I cut all the rest of the fabric so we get a nice scrappy look. Okay, so to cut the rest of the pieces, you're just gonna pick up like, I don't know, three of different colors. And I like to just mix it up that way because that'll ensure that we get a random colorway throughout the blocks. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So I picked a red or a maroon, a blue and a green out of all my strips and I'm gonna stack them up as neat as I can. I mean, this is really critical. Uh, sometimes it's even best to cut them individually like we did with the test block, but I do wanna show you how you can do this with multiple layers. All right, so I'm gonna stack these up. And because of that pinked edge, it can be a little tricky And then I'm gonna take that same ruler. I'm gonna disregard my lines on the mat and I'm gonna cut my first strip. And the first piece I'm gonna cut is my 14 and a half out of this dark, okay? I'm gonna line it up, making sure again that my registration lines here and here and here 
here at my 14 and a half inch mark are right on. Everything is straight and lined up. I'm gonna hold and cut. That gives me three of my 14 and a half inch strips. So now for each block, you need one of the 14 and a half inch strips. Okay, and it'll be nice and randomized then because I won't have like say all of my 14 and a half blocks or logs for my log cabin won't all be red. I'll make sure that I have a variation of colors throughout. And I'm gonna keep doing that throughout uh, all the strips. So for example, for the rest of this strip, I'm not gonna cut another 14 and a half inch strip. I'm gonna go to a 12 or an eight or whatever other sizes I want to do to randomize this as best as possible. And then when I'm piecing the blocks, I'm just gonna make sure that I don't put two of the same color together. So when I'm about halfway finished cutting all of the strips, I do go through and take an inventory and make sure that I am on track to make sure that I have enough for the blocks that I'm gonna make. Now for this particular quilt, I'm going to make 16 blocks. So I wanna make sure that I have enough for 16 blocks. I'm just gonna cut my pieces and see where I stand. So I know I have 12 of these, which are the two and a half inch squares. There's four, eight, I have 11 of these, okay? So I'm tracking about right. So I have nine of these. So I know I probably need to cut a few extras of, of this size, which is what, the six and a half inch. I have 11 of these, that's pretty close. And so forth. I'm not gonna go through and count them all for you, but this is just gonna give me an idea of what I need to do to fill in the gaps. So I have all of my pieces cut. This is enough for uh, 15 blocks because of course we made one with the uh, test block that we made. So you can see I did have to dig into my stash and cut some more pieces. I didn't have enough of the beiges which I knew would happen because it happened last time, but that's not a problem. I was able to, uh, trust me, I have enough scraps that I could find some. If you don't have the scraps that would go with your jelly roll, whatever one you choose, you can always buy like a yard or two to go with it. So you don't have to buy a whole nother jelly roll and that would work too. So to sew this, now that these are all cut, we can chain piece them. Meaning that the first two pieces are the two, two and a half inch squares. So we can put these all together, sew them all at once press them all, and then add the next one. And that's what I'm gonna do. It makes it really fast and easy, and you can just zip through these in no time. So I'm gonna sew these together, and maybe even the next two rows, and then I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so I already started uh, the first two, well, three pieces all together, and I just wanted to have something a little bit bigger to show you so I could demonstrate how to chain piece these. There are 15 of these and there are 15 of these and we're gonna put them together. Now remember we have our test block, that's our template, but as I said before, I'm gonna put this dark square, the middle square is always gonna be facing the back of my machine and I'm gonna work counterclockwise. So here we go. And I'm gonna get to almost the end and put my next piece on and feed it through. And as far as the fabric goes, I'm just making sure that it's not the exact same fabric. Different colors doesn't matter, same pattern, but different colors doesn't matter, but I don't wanna have the exact same fabric.
So they are all done. I'm gonna cut them apart. And I use this really cool contraption right here. And just, just run these along here. I'm going to set the seams by pressing them while they're just like this, like I did before. And then I'm going to uh, press this towards the piece I just put on. I'm gonna keep doing that until I get my entire block made. Okay, so they are all finished and they're all so scrappy and wonderful. Now they should measure 14 and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. And you should know if they measure that by the logs or the strips that you were putting onto your blocks. If everything went on beautifully and the measurements were right and all of that wonderful stuff, you shouldn't even have to square these blocks up because you know that last log that went on was 14 and a half inches, making your entire block 14 and a half inches. Now, double check them of course, but mine were spot on. I think I had a couple places I had to trim, but nothing major. So with the 15 blocks we made plus the test block, we now have 16 and we can start laying out our quilt design. Now there are so many variations because basically this is a half square triangle. So just like in my video on the table topper, there are so many different ways to lay this out and uh, here's a few. So you can do a star and that always looks very pretty. You can also do layout that's called the barn raising. And if you even added some more rows, that would really be cool because you could see how that medallion in the middle would really stand out. You can also make pinwheels and all kinds of other things too. For the quilt that I gave Tracy for her giveaway, I did the layout that's called field and furrow. I think that's the way you say that. Hopefully that's the way you say it. And uh, it really does turn out nice. I personally really like this layout. I think it's stunning with the stripes going diagonal and it just, I don't know, it's just a really great scrappy looking quilt. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments or even email me or whatever. I'm happy to help you with this project. Have a wonderful day and make sure you take some time to sew. I'll see you soon, bye.